Hello folks, welcome back. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. I had some technical difficulties yesterday. If you take a look over this shoulder, I had to replace a CD system, so I have very makeshift. Oh, you actually can't hide that better. But that's okay. Um, of course, behind my head, that right there is the wall of is the door of wrestling, and I'm here to talk about pro wrestling. In fact, I have a lot of thank yous to give. Tom, you s let's see here. I'll, I'll, I'll do you last because because I have to figure out what I have to give you. That's a that's all the same Tom here. So your cover roll. Thank you very much for your interaction. You sir have won twice. You get that six count. Linkiora 2! You, sir, are definitely a master of the air guitar. Teflon Billy, 
you're, you're there walking around with your briefcase boombox. Got city. Crawl out of here. X three DX you sir always win by dirty pin. Jazzy 029, you are definitely a member of the El Generico band. Mike Spitz here. You, sir. Holy shit. Harmful rib? You know how to dance. You grooved to that tune because Jordan has back. Oh my god. Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. And last but not least, Tom, you know some kung fu fighting.
So let me do a very quick, quick recap. I'd like to thank all those that have interacted with me. Again, if you would like your own little personally dedicated video, yeah, you can do that a couple of ways. You can, one, find me on the Discord group over there at WooTube. Um, you can leave a comment, send an email, or subscribe. Please subscribe. I need subscribers. Um, just to recap a couple things about WrestleMania 36. I did, a re I did a recap and review of part one because I was still under suspension. But then for day two, what did you say? I'm just playing a hole. Uh, and then for day two, I was able to live stream again. Yes. The people in charge of YouTube saw to allow me to, to live stream again. We'll see how long that goes. I thought I felt something funky there. It's only a bad thing. I think one day this is all going to come off. I'll just start from scratch. I actually forget the last time I did that. Wow, I actually do forget the last time I did that. That's not good. That's okay. It'll grow back in a week. I mean, this happened in like three or four days. That's okay. But just to recap a little bit of day two, um, Dr. Tom actually did a lot better in his, in his predictions. Uh, he was actually inside the head of one, Stephanie McMahon. As to what to do on the second day, because he actually picked five out of eight matches, so that puts him better than 50-50. And then, you know what, that's right. I forgot to add that one match. Uh, overall, Dr. Tom got 10 out of 16 matches right. Let's see here. Um, if I would have gotten 12, I would have given myself. Okay. So, yeah, so he definitely earned a, he was, he was definitely someone in the head of Stephanie McMahon also for all of WrestleMania. That leads us to the topic for today. Today's going to be the, the Raw After Mania. And wow, was it a weird show. Um. They had, I think the good thing they did, they didn't just show all the matches. They just showed the highlights of them. So at least it made the paying audience feel like something special. And actually, they had a lot of live wrestling. I mean, the highlights, I think, only lasted. Even the longest highlight, I think, was only, I think, five minutes long. So that's not too bad. We're going to start off here. Uh, starts with Brock and Drew recap for the WWE Championship. Makes sense. We'll actually get back to that at the end of the show. And then it starts off with Asuka taking on Liv Morgan, and Asuka comes out just spouting all kinds of Japanese. She could, she could have told Liv that that wow, I like you did with your eyelashes. I wouldn't have known. Money says Liv wouldn't have known, and if she yelled it loud enough. They would think she's yelling at her. That was pretty cool. For the most part, um, Asuka's the one wrestler, I will say this, she's the one wrestler that's realized how to counter the roll-up. Because normally the, the roll-up is the most devastating move in all of wrestling. Well, Asuka at least can counter that. Uh, Liv, she did a matrix into a roll-up. That was pretty cool to see. I'll tell you what, Liv has improved like li by leaps and bounds. Even probably more so than Carmella has. Uh, then she did a... Her Karana through the ropes, which was pretty good. A second row drop kick. All of Liz's, Liz's moves are really good. They're put together well. They make sense. They're in line with her character. She just shows a lot of ass. That's okay. And Kevin Dunn, you cheeky bastard. Oh, he showed the, 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 the between the leg shot. I'll try to limit my, my foul language on this. Now they can live stream again. I don't want to lose that, lose that privilege. Uh, so Liv hit a hurricane through the ropes. That was pretty cool. Uh, tossed Asuka to the floor. Uh, and then Asuka, oh, 
with those kicks and that semi go to sleep. Then she comes and asks again. And she just blatantly kicks the the arrogant kicks to the face, the beautiful face of Liv Morgan. Hey, Liv, I'm single too. Okay, in case you get bored, you can always stop by my place, or I could always come over to your house, or wherever you live. Yeah, yeah, because I think she's in Orlando now too. You know, she's booked out of New Jersey. Hey, I used to live in New Jersey too. You can talk about New Jersey stuff. I don't think they're at a stay-at-home order, but. I think it's only like parts of northern New Jersey are like southern New Jersey. Like you go out to parts of southwest New Jersey, there's literally nothing there. And I'm talking about like in southwest, like just north of Cape May, near near the Delaware River. Um, enough about geography though. Uh, then Liz, Liz, Liz tried though. She had a second rope code breaker. And did some nasty turtle stomp. Uh, so she made a comeback. Asuka hit the Jujigatami, the German style suplex, and the Shining Wizard, all kind of in rapid succession. And Asuka put in the Asuka lock. Uh, eventually, Liv tapped up. But I'll tell you what, Liv has improved by leaps and bounds. This was a fun, entertaining match. Asuka, because of her her bombastic voice. I learned that word in high school, so yes, you do learn things in high school, folks. With her bombastic voice. I mean, she kept the match fun. <laughs> Again, the old up the skirt shot by whoever does the cameras for Kevin Dunn. He has to get a chuckle out of that sometimes. But overall, this was a good sir this was a good cheeseburger match. And Liv's just improving my leaps and bounds. So it's always good to see that. And then we had Becky Lynch and Shayna Baszler highlights. We had a Becky interview and a Shayna interview. Just like she was in that like confused state. It's like the thrill of victory. The agony of defeat. The thrill of victory. The agony of defeat. Just repeat it like a couple times. And it's like, okay, she's obviously not well from losing. Then, oh, wow. I thought I was going to lose it because I, I knew what was going to happen to begin with. And I knew something was up because they had this match for the third time. In three weeks, they had the same match three times in a row. And they said, oh, this is a rematch from WrestleMania. No, WrestleMania was the rematch from Monday Night Raw. This is the match. This is the rematch of the rematch. If they do this one more time, I'm just going to say, Get a little bit more creative. Let's, let's bring up some more NXT jobbers. Because that's what happened for the rest of the show. But I'll get into that. Because you probably saw that in the title of the show. So yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that stuff. Uh, it was getting the Street Profits. Taking on Angel Garza and Austin Theory. And when Zelina Vega came out, I looked at her pretty intently because she was in her wrestling gear. I'm like, why is Lena? Oh, oh God, they're going to do a holla, holla, holla player triple threat match. And well, we'll get to that. So the Street Profits again, Dawkins comes in, he starts running the ropes pretty good. The double team, the Street Profits, Austin Theory for the most part just gets beat up. Uh, Angel Garza gets in. Angel, this was weird because Angel Garza never lost his pants, which is uncharacteristic of Angel Garza. Um, again, he goes there. He just puts in the stretch. And then Austin Theory gets back in a little double team action there. Uh, Dawkins. Now, Dawkins gets beat up, not Montez Ford. Normally, the smaller of the two of the tag in the tag team always get beat up. This time, they're beating up the larger person. Maybe WWE's heard my criticisms, I guess. I don't know. I hope no one's listening to this. Or, the, or they're watching my YouTube show. But, yeah, because normally the smaller guy always gets, normally Ford always gets beat up. So now Dawkins is getting beat up. So, <laughs> at least they decide, maybe we've done enough of this, we'll just reverse roles. So Dawkins gets beat up. Uh, Angel Carza then goes, becomes a math technician. A lot, a lot of trying leg locks, knee bars, uh, arm bars, things of that nature. There was that... Uh, Dawkins hit the Exploder Suplex. 
Ford came flying across body. And then as Ford was going to the top, Zelina Vega grabbed, grabbed Ford and, and the ref turned around and said, Hey, what are you doing? I see you. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 it wasn't me. Just keep on going. And of course, Angel Garza and Austin Theory are just speeding them up. So Zelina Vega, I'm like, wait a second. There was a hint of this in WrestleMania. But then, uh, it's like, ooh, this could be interesting player. So then Bianca Belair comes in, makes the saves. Bianca says, hey, I'm ready. You look like you're ready. Let's have a match. So they do. So the next match is going to be Zelina Vega taking on Bianca Belair. Uh, starts off, Bianca's obviously showing off her strength. Bianca's a lot taller than this little Zelina Vega. Uh, she just shoves Zelina Vega. Uh, Bianca Belair just has her way with her for the most part. Until she gets posted. Uh, posting, if you don't know, is when you get tossed into the ring post. By your opponent, uh, Zelina Vega. She's just tiny. Like she tries to do a version of the tarantula, but she can only get to like the second rope, and then she does that short TDT. Mainly because even if Bianca Bel Belair is like standing and bent over, she still couldn't get that front he headlock to do the DDT. You never realize how how short, how especially how short some of the women are until you see them live. Because when I saw Nikki Cross live. She's tiny. I don't think her her head barely came up to the to the ring mat. I mean, her head was like at the second. I'm like, whoa, you're tiny. But yeah, she's just this ball of energy, and, and Zelina Vega is just this ball of and fuego Latina meltdown heat. But and let's see here. Then there was the the Dragon Sleeper Clutch, where it's like the Camel Clutch, but it's in Dragon Sleeper by Zelina Vega. However, Bianca Bell are strong enough to power out of that. And this leads to a Gorilla Press <sighs> by Bianca Belair. And then the guys start to brawl outside the ring and inside the ring, and then ding, 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 the bell goes off. So, so this whole idea right now is a can of soup. Because the first part was a ham sandwich. And then they're like, hey, there's three there. There's three here. Holla, 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 player. We got ourselves a six-person mixed tag match. So it was this, then it was the Street Profits and Bianca Belair taking on Angel Garza, Austin Theory, and Zelina Vega. Theory still gets beat up in this match. It doesn't really matter what happens. Theory was going to get beat up this match. Uh, let's see here. Ford. Again, gets he does get distracted though by by Zelina Vega. Bianca just destroys Zelina Vega. Uh, Angel Garza made the save. Ford, uh, yeah, Ford's not too. Oh, who does that? Oh yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, Ford gets <laughs> distracted by Angel Garza. Angel Garza left his pants on the whole time. He just like ran out of the building. That was weird. Angel Garza. I have no idea where it is. Uh, Bianca Belair hit the KOD on Zelina Vega. First time Zelina Vega probably ever ate something like that. And the Street Profits and Bianca Belair win. Once I saw Zelina Vega come down to the ring in her wrestling gear, I actually knew, okay, this is going to be a holla, holla, holla match in a little bit. I think this little match, I think, took up. I think this whole segment took up like a good 45, 50 minutes now that I think about it. Uh, this was a ham sandwich only because it was kind of predictable. And again, it was the third time they are going to meet them. Like, they have to do something different. Oh, Zelina's in ring gear. Let, let's see what we can do here. Angel Garza left his pants on. It would have been funny if Angel Garza tried to distract Bianca Belair by ripping his pants off in front of her and probably angering her husband or making her husband laugh. But that didn't happen, so I'm like, eh. Again, it's a ham sandwich. And Bobby Lashley does an interview. 
Um, he was very upset at his loss, mainly because Lionel was telling him what to do. He says, you know what, I might need some new management and a new wife. Lana comes out. She looks different. She's done something with her makeup. Um, she says, Charlie, what did you do to my husband? Lana still looks kind of hot. She was in that kind of sluttyish looking red dress. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see where that goes. Then we had, I'll tell you what, then this, they, they gave this match a lot of time. It was Alistair Black taking on Apollo Crews. This was pretty good. Alistair Black, classic start. For the most part, this was a very technically based wrestling match. Actually, a lot of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu by Alistair Black and, Ju and kind, kind of Judo ish. Uh, he did a Kimura takedown, which is great Jiu Jitsu coming from Alistair Black, who's known for his kickboxing. Uh, the fact that he's been incorporate other martial arts into his wrestling arsenal is also good. I like that. I like that when they change stuff up. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Cruz and starts doing shoulder tackles. Once it starts to get to the power moves, of course, Cruz is the, much significantly more builder big of the two wrestlers. Like if Alistair Black was walking down the block with a shirt on, um, you would just say, dude, that guy has tattoos on his face. Like, Apollo Crews comes walking down on the ground, and you're like, dude, that guy's jacked. But Alistair Black again. Yeah, Alistair Black, again, did a lot of arm bars, making his uh, leg locks trying to look strong, even though he did it the wrong. He, they were trying to sell it as a knee bar. A knee bar is not like that. Um, knee bar, you have your legs straight against their hips, and you pull the foot back. You don't really hook it. And if he was going to do a heel hook, it was on the wrong. It was, you don't do the heel hook. You don't do the heel hook across the. I've never seen a heel. I'm, I'm sure you could. It was probably tougher. It's probably tougher to do a heel hook across the body. Do a heel hook to the side. It's a lot easier. It puts a lot more stress on the Achilles tendon. So the announcer was like, yeah, okay. Um, the back body drop outside of the ring. Again, the judo trip. The moon salt from apron to floor. All of this was actually really fun. And they, it was a long competitive match it just wasn't a five move squash match for Alistair Black this this match was actually better than the than the wrestling match he and uh Alistair Black and Bobby Lashley had at WrestleMania at least I think so it was just different it was it was longer there was a build to it uh, the toss po the toss power bomb oh gee, you need some strength for that uh however uh, Cruz did miss the splash then he had a superplex. Um, he then he did, of course, the gorilla press slam on Alistair Black. Uh, did both the standing moonsault and standing five star splash. Eventually, Alistair Black kind of got a second win, hit the Black Mass. Apollo Cruz goes down in a slumping heat. But I'll tell you what, that was a fun match. That was a good match. That was a, that was a darn near surf and turf match. Oh, I did take a lot of this. Yeah, this was actually a pretty busy show. Then they had the Randy Orton and Edge highlights from their match. That was pretty good to see. Again, they had about five minutes of it, so they didn't replay the whole thing. They didn't kind of take away from the paying audience, which is good. Because you want to keep them around. Because they're the ones going to be paying the bills for it. For a couple of weeks at least. And you just didn't give it away. Because that, that was slow and plotting. And would have put audience members out. But the fact that they just showed the highlights of it. That was good. Get the main points. That's all you really need from the TV. Then we have uh, the tag team of Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. Interesting. Taking on Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. Danny Burch is so hard hitting, but once I saw those two get the jobbers interest, I'm like, oh no. Why are they doing this? The Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch are so good. They're one of my favorite tag teams. Uh, there was a double teams. Again, with Danny Burch, they did the classic double chop that hurts. That just, it just looks like it hurts. I don't know why people say Oni Lorcan has one of the nastiest looking chops ever. Then when Ricky and Cedric Alexander started to do some really fast-paced tag team tandem work, which is really good. It's really good to see. It's a little bit different pace. Maybe Ricochet's filing a place as a tag team person. 
if they're gonna have the smaller, faster tag teams on Raw and keep keep some of the, the bigger, beefier boys over on SmackDown, uh, who, who knows with who knows what goes through Vince's head. But but he likes some good shit though. And that Firefly Funhouse match was good shit. Don't you think so? You better think so or you're fired. But then, let's see here. So after that, again, there was a recoil to end the match. Ricochet and Cedric Alexander win, I guess, because their main main roster stables. They just jobbed out. Why job out? Ordy Loke and Danny Burch, though. Terrible. That was a good middle okay match. That was a ham sandwich. And there was a Kevin Owens interview, and Kevin Owens was very slowly becoming a Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then we had a Seth Rollins match versus Denzel. Dangered. I, I, I apologize. I didn't say the jobber's last name right. Uh, Seth Rollins is not look happy. He's in black again. He, he just starts to take out all his frustrations on poor Denzel with the stomps. Um, and just he just tosses... Tosses a jobber into the barricade. And that was a stomp. That was a squash match. It was different. I'll tell you what. Seth Rollins came out to amazing lasers. Only because that, that performance center, man, they have everything they really need. We might see them there do these. I don't, I don't know. if I think it was taped. Don't think it's live. Because I know... There's a curfew in Orlando. It, it has to be taped. But then the stay-at-home order. I mean, I went to three banks today. There were plenty of cars on them. It was normal traffic out there. Like, like, like no one would have known there was a stay-at-home order. And some stay-at-home orders, parts of the laws don't make sense. Um, well, well, I'll say this before I get into that. But this was a ham sandwich of a squash. But some of the stay-at-home orders don't make sense. Um, you can go for a walk on the beach, but you can't sit in a chair or sit on a beach. Ball. You can go fishing on the beach, but if you're going to go fishing on the beach, I don't know if you can bring a chair and just set your surf pole on a spike in the sand and just sit and watch it in a chair, or, or, or they call it sitting if you're sitting on a cooler. Can you go in the ocean? Do you can, can you not go in the ocean? Uh, a, a lot of it doesn't make sense. You can go grocery shopping, but you're supposed to stay at home. You can go to the banks. You can go. Liquor stores are still open. So as, as far as I'm concerned, the liquor stores are open. As long as you're home by 10 o'clock, it doesn't matter. As long as you're home by the time the liquor stores close, it's all good. And then the next match was Nia Jax and Deanna Perrazzo. Boo, Deanna Perrazzo. Well, you know what? I, I, she doesn't deserve. She doesn't deserve the automatic boo. She doesn't. She didn't make fun of my princess Kimberly yet, mainly because she didn't have time. Again, this was really just for the most part a squash match. Nia Jax is back. She came back from double knee surgery. I think it was the ACL in both knees that she had to have repaired. Uh, I don't even want to think of that. Um. Nia Jax just shoves Deanna Peraza into the corner, beats her up, drags her by the hair. The short arm, like, three short arms clothesline. Yeah, Deanna Peraza tries. <sighs> yeah, so much for that idea. Bye-bye uh, <laughs> into the Simone drop. I love it when the wrestlers are saying, time to die, or bye-bye, good night. Whenever they, they interact with their opponents, like, yeah, <laughs> good night, baby. Baby! Um, did the Simone drop, pulled her off. Oh, you didn't want me to finish it now? Okay. Then she hit that stack DDT. I think Paige used to do something like it, where she would uh, stack her up on top of her thighs and then just like fall down. That stack DDT. This was a squash match. It was good. It's good to see Nia Jax back. At least she doesn't look like a Klingon like Tamina. It was a ham sandwich. Then again, they had a quick five minutes of the Boneyard match, kind of hitting all the highlights. 
with the Undertaker and AJ Styles. Then we get to Umberto Carrillo. Uh, he was taking on Brandon Vinks. Umberto, again, he just comes out hot. Uh, whenever Umberto was allowed to run, he did good. Whenever he got grounded and had to resort to Parmos, Vinks, obviously the bigger of the two, much bigger of the two, actually. Uh, to control, again, Umberto is faster. Vinks is stronger. Uh, Vinks did a pretty good hip toss. Uh, Umberto hit the Aztec press going in the rolling moonsault. Um, and I'll tell you what, Umberto has the best high moonsault in a while. That was fun to see. That was good. Uh, Umberto Carrillo won. It's good to see that he's back on the winning track. It was a fairly short match. But I'll, I'll tell you what, it wasn't bad though. This was a cheeseburger match. Then there was a Charlotte Flair interview. Yeah, I don't know why they put the belt on her. That's making people a lot of scratch their heads. Then there was a WWE title recap. Again, just the highlights of it, which I think only took up two minutes considering the match was only like five minutes long. Uh, then Drew McIntyre interview in the ring. The Big Show comes out because this happened actually supposedly after WrestleMania. I have no idea what happened. The Big Show comes out. Um, you see, he starts dropping curse words. Says, Shit. You're a punk. You're a bitch. I'll ring the bell. And then you just slap Drew in the face. Like, fight me right now. After that slap, you said, okay. We're on now. So this led to the final match of the evening. The, uh, Drew McIntyre taking on the Big Show. It was a just slap. Oh, that big hand right across his face. That had to hurt. The Big Show, for the most part, he did Big Show stuff. Really clubbing blows. Nothing impressive. Um, the, the headbutt, that looks like it hurt. He did the Vader bomb elbow. I, ouch. I thought, and then all of those open palm chest slaps. That's a big hand hitting hitting a massive area. I don't care what they say. I was rubbing my chest after that. I'm sure Charlotte Flair was rubbing her chest after that too. Sure, sure, Nia Jax was rubbing her chest. Out. Oh wait, I digress. <laughs> it's just good to see Nia Jax back. Um, the clubbing blows, the headbutt, and then Drew came back. Yes, it's with his own chest, and Drew body slammed. Ah, oh, the big show, Hulk Hogan, Andre style. That was awesome. That's nostalgia. And then uh, the big show hit a hit a choke slam, and then it ended. It was eleven o'clock. Well, what the heck happened? And I'm like, what? It's eleven o'clock already. Stay tuned. Um, I'll get this part. It was a cheeseburger. Mainly because I think it's going to lead to bigger and better things, and it's a way to prolong things and give them a reason. So the show on Monday, next Monday. So that's good. We're going to have more Monday Night Raw. We're going to have more pro wrestling, the only near sport we have going on. And then hopefully by next Monday, things will be semi-back to normal. Because I still have a few more days, so I have to wait for my Florida unemployment check to show up. Actually, I have a potential work situation tomorrow, as long as I can qualify for something. I'll see how that goes. That's going to be pretty funky. So I do that tomorrow while listening to some pro wrestling stuff. So if I get it, I get it. But if I don't, I'm not going to be bent up about it so we'll see what happens and that was monday night raw started off terrible but i'll tell you what it ended pretty good there was some good stuff in between i'll be honest it was a cheeseburger of a show there have been better raw after mania shows or there's probably been worse raw after mania shows and I gotta take all these notes out because tomorrow I'm live streaming. Yay! So tomorrow, tomorrow schedule, I'm gonna be live streaming uh, Impact Wrestling because that's a lot different. 
than other stuff because I can get away with a lot more there, I think, unless they change stuff up. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I just have I just have to keep it like under like six seconds for highlights, but I can have like the like the little like mini square at least. So that's good. Cause that's what I used to do in the past with Impact, and they were they didn't care. Um, Wednesday is going to be a recap show of AEW that I cannot do for AEW. Thursday. We <laughs> take off Thursday. Friday is Friday Night SmackDown, and then I get to Tranquilo Saturday and Sunday. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Like, please like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll see everyone later. Bye.